Often the cherry on top for your indie manga, text can go so wrong and often does. So let's look at it and see what we can do, see what we should do, and see what we're actually doing. Manga and comics are a combination of art and text that has a long history together. Interestingly, if you take away the art, you no longer have a comic. You're kind of left with a novel or some notes. But if you take away the text and do a silent comic or manga, the format remains the same and it maintains its spirit. It's unsurprising then that most of the focus on learning and studying is in the art and the layouts and the storytelling, but not necessarily the text itself. Way back in early American comics, the chances are the people lettering were just someone in the office who had really good handwriting. Fast forward to now, we have digital ways of doing typesetting, and so the importance on the craft has been downplayed, but it's still really important, and we forget easily how much our readers interact with the text and how much it will affect their experience of the story. Shockingly, readers want to, well, read. But this isn't a novel. As we said, it's more like a movie on paper. So don't get carried away. I know writers have a lot to say and they want to be present in their work, but much of your writing is actually translated into the art. So don't forget that. If there's a lot of art and very little text, you're not being silenced. You're extremely present. But if you try to force everything into the text, you really start bogging down your story and it puts a lot of strain on your reader. Our job with the text is to complement the artwork and help guide the eye around the page in a way that doesn't impede or confuse the reader. Original English language manga has an interesting text problem, historically. The guiding influence, from what I can tell, has been scanlators and translators and fanlators, who more often than not are probably fans or people who know both languages, translators, that kind of thing, and they're not necessarily graphic designers and artists like you might find in lettering as a trade. So they do what they can, their main goal is to translate and parse out the information so you can read your Japanese manga and know what the hell is going on. Their focus was on conveying the Japanese text so that an English reader can read it. They are further restricted by the pre-existing bubbles and the text that the original creator has decided to write. Plus, there's a lot more information that you can find in a kanji that is not necessarily in an English word, so there's more data there to wrangle with, and it's, it's all gonna be squeezed in this tiny little vertical space. From what I can tell, the layout and design that came from the translators has kind of stuck, so you get a lot of chimney stacked text, uh, broken words, too many words crammed into a narrow space, haphazardly and poor typesetting in general. Stick around to the end and I'll go over a little bit the nitty-gritty of typesetting and what some of the different things are that you should watch for when you're putting the text in your own manga. For two writing systems, English and Japanese couldn't be more different. Japanese manga's original language is very logographic and phonographic, and it's also vertically written. Like hieroglyphs, kanji is based on an image and a concept, and a sound on top of that. Then it's combined with kana, which sounds out syllables, and is used to sound out words that probably started as kanji. And I believe that kanji was adopted by Japan and came over from China, rather than it being a, an organic writing system that was developed with their language. So there's some play in the translation between spoken word and written word. Hiragana and katakana came later for ease of reading and writing, and hiragana was often favored by women. But none of these are issues in English, so we're kind of getting a little too in the weeds here for our purposes. So anyway, Japanese. It's generally written vertically and is read right to left, which is reverse of English. So English is horizontal and read left to right. There generally aren't spaces between the words, and they can be broken up pretty liberally. In manga, they, from what I've noticed, they tend to be aligned to the top, and then broken up into upwards of four lines. It's not only one big bubble, it's broken up in several bubbles and distributed across the page. For this video, I tried really hard to find out if there was a rule of thumb on, on how, much, how many words should go in a bubble, and I really couldn't find anything for Japanese. But manga pages are on average divided into three. There's a lot of decompression compared to American comic. Full spreads are common, few words are common. It's even common to go several pages without any words at all. Japanese is a naturally visual language and written system, so the readers are naturally primed to perceive of the visual information, and the creators are more primed to draw and write that way, if that makes sense. The most advice I could find was no more than 25 words per panel, 12 or less per bubble, with a maximum of 60 per page. Any more than that, and you start choking out the art and tiring out your reader. You may be compressing things too much and may want to consider thinning it out a bit, it, maybe spreading your information over a couple more pages, turn it into a spread, something like that. Lore dumps are boring. Everyone knows this. No one likes reading them. If readers want text walls, there are novels. If you want to write massive text walls, 
maybe try light novels or an illustrated novella. In my research, I came across a few funny memes calling out Togashi and hiatus x hiatus to show how dense the text became over time. And there are like entire pages of just text with like one face at the top. And again, if this is you, consider a novella. Here's another one that was One Piece if written by Tagashi, which is even funnier. In the same vein, I found a Reddit thread asking, as a reader, which density do you prefer? The scale being zero, which is blame, very little text. The second one is one, Chainsaw Man. In this particular page, there's only a few bubbles. Two is One Piece, getting a little wordy. And three was Hunter x Hunter. It's a lot. It's a lot. The general consensus among the comments was somewhere between one and two, that no text ever gets a little slow and boring. A bubble or two is still kind of a little not enough, but then jumping to one piece was a lot. So somewhere, some nice little balance in between, which interestingly takes us back to the advice that I saw. Okay, let's look at these two images. So the first one, we have two bubbles. It's about 12 words. The second one, there's about 13 bubbles and it's 104 or so words, quite a difference. So if we Goldilocks somewhere in the middle, we have, if we look back at our notes, it's 60 words a page as recommended. 12 or less bubbles, which is landing is right in 1.5, where this group tended to point towards, which I thought was really interesting. Someone, a few people pointed out that if you are getting to the point of Hunter x Hunter, the writer has planned really poorly how to portray their work, they're telling, not showing, and they're not figuring it out in the art, and they should just write a novel. A lot of them are just wishing Tagashi would write a light novel and be done with it. English, as we know, is very horizontal. It reads left to right. Our words are extremely long and individual letters are used to make up words and sounds instead of images making concepts. A typical American comic book page has five to six panels, maximum nine, and the page layout is kind of divided up on that grid. Even if you're not using nine panels, the, the shape of the page and panels has that nine panel division, where in manga it has a three panel division usually. Even if there are more than three panels, the page is divided into three. American comics are far more condensed than their really sparse manga counterparts, which are full of mood rather than plot. American comics are a lot more plot heavy and where we're going instead of where we are. American comics tend to be plot focused more than character focused and a lot more external than internal. And this in turn is going to affect the amount of text that we need or use. The wisdom passed down through letters over the decades has been no more than 25 words per bubble, four lines preferred, though I've seen some variants on that, 40 words per panel, and no more than 200 words per page. It's a lot more than manga. Oh my god, that's like more than double. As I said earlier, I know writers have a lot to say, but if we're making manga, 200 words per page is way too much. Way too much. As I was saying before, using text and balloons in American manga has kind of been hobbled by its scanlation history. Yes, we want to keep the vertical aesthetic, but out of necessity for our language, the bubbles need to be a little wider and the words do need a little more room. If you're doing a descriptive lore dump of your, your system or something, I hate to say it, no, I don't hate to say it, but you're, you're being lazy here. You may need to give yourself some more room, think about it a little longer and see what you can show instead of just dumping it out and telling it. It also helps if you edit and play with your text and words, selecting words that lend themselves better to a slightly vertical format. Uh, try to use less words to say what you need to say and maybe push some of the concepts into the art if you can. Annoyingly, there are way too many common words that hover around the 15 letter mark and what are you going to do with that, you know? Hopefully it's somewhere in the sentence where it can be in the middle and the smaller words can collect around it but not have everything chimney stacked because that's the more your eye has to do this, the more exhausting I think it ends up being. Okay, so let's dig into the history a little bit. So as far back as the 60s, Marvel artists were, and maybe still are, encouraged to leave a quarter of the panel for the text. And the bubbles and text were to be placed around the outside and you know, like the bottom and stuff of the frames so that they wouldn't cover up the art too much. Letters were written by hand. They're small, they're photographed, I guess, and then added to the art. And then when the whole thing is printed, it's printed with cheap ink on crappy paper. I mean, this paper is literally toilet paper, it's terrible. So by necessity of the materials, letterers had to write in such a way that made everything legible, even in that situation. The ink tended to smudge and bleed and things would like run into each other. And with the process of photographing, you also had a scrubber who would go in and clean up all the little dots and bits of dirt. And sometimes they would accidentally clean out dots or periods or stuff like that, which is kind of funny. And unfortunate. So to combat the readability issue and the writing speed, letters were all capitalized, making them more uniform. The constant size also allowed them to be packed in tighter, 
therefore you could say more and take up a little less room. Capitalized letters are easier to read smaller and are actually faster to read in short bursts. So if you're reading a few little bubbles, you can actually conceive of it really quickly. If you were to read an entire novel that way, your brain would probably melt. If you saw a billboard, it would probably deafen your eyeballs. But in short little bursts inside or around artwork, the information pops up and it makes it really easy for you to understand what's going on or what's being said. A neat bit of old tech that kind of solidified this capitalization was called an Ames Guide. A small tool from the 1900s, it helped you quickly make even consistent lines for lettering. Capitalized letters only required three lines, whereas mixed case and lowercase letters required five. So it's a lot more lines to draw when you have a time crunch. So with the capitalized letters, they're all the uniform height, so you've got the top, the bottom, and then the line space for the next letter. With mixed letters, you have the top of the tallest letter, like an L or an H, you have the middle, like the top of an O, then you have the bottom of all the letters, and then you have the dangly bits underneath, like G's and Y's, and then you have the line for the next space. When you have all those different shapes, the what they call the leading, which is the space between the lines, needs to be increased so that you can conceive of the different shapes. You can see this a lot more in really old printing, like advertisements and stuff, where the letters are kind of small and really far apart and blurred and smudgy. And in a comic, because if you were to write that way, because of all those, the increased letter size, the increased leading size and all of that, you lose a lot more space for your artwork because you need more space. With more space, you need larger letters, larger balloons, with more empty space in the balloons, goodbye artwork. One of the rules that kind of emerged that I thought was interesting is the I. Inside a word, an I isn't capitalized, it's just a single stroke. On one hand, this is quicker as you're writing, but then when they're on their own and it's being used for the personal pronoun I, it's given the crossbars on the top and bottom. Apparently this was because a single stroke on its own could be mistaken for a, an exclamation point. Maybe it was a one. It, it wasn't as clear what it was, but if you add the crossbars, it's very clearly an I, but those lines were not carried over into the middle of the word where it wasn't really necessary and would slow things down. So what has happened as a result of that is it's, it's really easy easy to notice when someone is an amateur letterer or not used to comic book lettering if they capitalize the I's within their words. I don't know, I just thought it was a fun little tidbit. Anyway, it all goes back to that crappy ink and crappy paper, and then it became tradition. Interestingly, although American comics over time, the inking improved, the paper improved, and then eventually returned to digital, which completely has changed the game, manga has sort of stuck with the cheap and crappy. Generally speaking, the idea is you, you buy it, you read it on the train, you toss it out. It's a little more disposable, cheaper to buy, cheaper to run, and it's not designed as a expensive collectible like was developed in America. Keeping that in mind, it's probably prudent for us to look at older American comic typesetting to inform how we treat our letters today on the newsprint with potentially questionable ink. Okay, so all that considered, what do we do with this? How can we improve our manga text? We're not stuck translating. We're not tethered to what a Japanese manga could decided. This is our own work, our own layout, our own bubbles. How can we improve it to give it the most pleasing aesthetic look without straying too far away from the vertical feel that manga pages have? Because really when it comes down to it, one of the major differences in pages between American and Japanese comics is our language is horizontal. So these pages are designed a little more horizontal manga pages have a more vertical feel. The artwork is a little more vertical, the movement is more vertical, the bubbles are certainly more vertical. It's definitely something I noticed after a while. It's definitely something I noticed when I first started trying to figure out how to do this manga stuff. It, it felt unnatural at first, but then after a while it became second nature. So yes, anyway, we need to, so we need to maintain that somewhat, that verticalness, even with our stupidly wide letters. Maybe ovalish bubbles instead of tight tall ones are probably better. To are probably better to stick with. Keep in mind your diamond arrangement of the letters and fewer words are better, less is more. If manga calls for 12 words and American comics calls for 25, we'd probably fall somewhere kind of in the middle. I've definitely found in doing my own work, first I would try to stick to 10 words in a bubble. It was some advice I found on a um, scan lighting website somewhere. I couldn't find it for this video, but it's out there somewhere. And over time it felt like not enough. I was cutting up speech a lot. And some of the panels I felt like I had a little more room. So I started bumping up the text and loosening up on that rule and maybe having 15 or 20 words in a bubble. And it still was fine. Anything more than that and even my 
writer was like, mm, that's a lot, we need to break that up. And sometimes that pushes off text into different panels, so it can, it can really affect your layouts. But it's worth it for the reading experience. We wanted that to be as smooth as possible. Like so many American mangaka, when I was starting out, I really leaned into the text stacking because I wanted to use the same bubbles, right? The really, really narrow ones and, and like allow it to open up a little bit. Like you don't want full long DC style bubbles, but you know, if you keep in mind your diamond shape, keep your words kind of small, limit your text a little bit, it'll probably still feel right. Once you start getting beyond 25 words, it really starts to feel too full, like a, like a paragraph without a period or a comma. I mean, if you have a lot of text, like a lore dump, first decide if you can push some of that information out into the art. Add pages if you need to decompress it a little bit and give yourself some room to do your explaining. I recently read an indie manga and found a bubble with 51 words, very narrowly stacked. This bubble was enormous. And its companion bubble had a f further 40 words. Are you Togashi? Do you need a novel? Bubbles like this become really cumbersome to read and I skip them. I'm sure other readers skip them too. It gets, it's too much. It's, it's, a, it's a huge ask. I'm old, time is short, I don't have time and the energy to read these novel-like bubbles. And th there, I have one particular comic in mind, but that's not the only one. I see, a, I see a lot. I'm sure you've seen it a lot too, where it's just, again, 50 words and then 40 words. You can break that up. That's more than a page worth of words in one panel. Okay, so it was very descriptive. So they could have done a lot more with the art. Take that panel and make it into a spread all on its own. And in writing, show don't tell. I mean, when it comes down to it, you're being lazy. So take a critical eye to that if you find yourself doing it. I mean, this is comics and manga. It's not a novel, it's not a novella. Just take your information and push it down a level. You know, make us dig for it a little bit. When uh, Lottie and I first started working together on Scathless, we didn't know each other at all and of course haven't gotten used to working with each other. We since have and she'll write to my artwork and I draw more easily to her writing than I started out with the first chapter. It was designed to be 20 pages. I think I added at least 10 or 15 pages because the text was so dense. She's very wordy. And I found over time that I tend to give each action change or emotional shift its own panel. And even in the bubbles, like you don't want multiple emotional shifts in one bubble. Your, your character can only realistically do so much in a moment. You have control over the shape of your bubbles, so be cognizant of how it's laying with your text. There's no reason to abandon it, forget it, let it be an afterthought. The text is a character all in itself. It's still an important part of the visual aesthetic of your work and the experience of reading it, so be nice to it. Look after it. Taking as long as this manga stuff does to make and to learn how to do, you might as well make it look its best. Even down to the lettering. It should be clean and invisible, easily becoming a voice in your reader's head or multiple voices. There's some indie creators that I know well enough where I hear their text in their voice, which is kind of interesting, but that's a whole different thing. It may sound counterintuitive for a video about typesetting and text, but I actually recommend in your practice doing some silent manga or even some silent four coma, and you can practice two things at once. It forces you to think about the information you're trying to portray and to portray it visually without words. I was reading the winner for the 2020 Tezuka. I still find the cover annoying. At first it made me not want to read it, but I finally read it. And it's not in English, so I have no idea what the words say, but it didn't matter. I knew what was going on the whole time. I could follow the story and get a feel for what might be said, even if I didn't know what was actually being said. So that I would say is a success in visual storytelling. You need to practice silent manga and it's weird at first. It's a little harder than you expect, but once you play with it, it can be fulfilling. I like playing with it in four coma because it gives you really strong parameters and boundaries for practicing this thing. You have a fairly regimented set of information that you're supposed to be giving. So it takes out some of the variables and makes it easier to focus on how do I deliver this information, not, you know, how am I organizing this information and all this kind of stuff. The layouts are pretty specific. The organization of information is pretty specific, so you just have to figure out how to portray it, which helps. It forces you to portray your information visually because you can't lean on the text. And then when you come to the point where you're adding the text to your page, take the time to work with the layout. More than American comics, it's used as part of the page guide and the, the eye guide around your story, around your work. Like I said, in American comics, it's just relegated to the, the edge of the panels, like don't cover up the artwork. Whereas in manga, sometimes it becomes part of the artwork, which is interesting and fun to play with. Just be intentional with it. Don't hide your amazing art. I remember seeing a guy who had amazing intricate drawings. His draftsmanship is phenomenal. And then he would just slap a bunch of word bubbles over the top. I'm like, what are you doing? I want to see this thing. I want to know what it looks like and really it was food too. I'm like, I really want to, my eyes to feast in this food and I can't see it because these bubbles are in the way. Goofball. Let your the hero shine, which in this case would be the food artwork and the text as a support character. It supports the artwork. Isn't just a redheaded stepchild, the last thought, 
you know, oh, we have to put in some text. No, it's it's a character in itself. It can easily become an afterthought, but don't forget to give it the consideration it needs. It's part of the reader's experience. Manga and translations are an unreliable source for examples of good practice and techniques for this, but should be considered in conjunction with the long history of lettering in American comics. Look at the work of the pros and see what they were doing and, and what they came to in the boundaries of their work. In this digital age, you can even make your own font. I've seen online programs where you write in your letters and it makes it into a font for you. So you can use your own handwriting, which is kind of fun. Or visit Comicraft and Blambot. I'll put their links in the description below. They are letterers from the industry who have gone on to make fonts. Wild Words, made by Comic Craft's Richard Starking, is one of the most used fonts and the most stolen fonts for scanlations, which is kind of interesting. I use it. I pay for it. Placing your text in your bubble. Not really seen a lot of advice on that, except that you want to maintain about a letter's worth of space around your diamond. I've seen some indie bubbles where, like, say, this is the balloon and the text is, like, this big in the middle. I've seen some indie bubbles where the, this would be your balloon, and then there's a tiny little bit of text in the middle, which of course is a layover from translating, where kanji might be really big, or there might be a lot of kanji that just says one little thing in English, so it really changes it. You're not having to scrub a translated page, so you have control over the size of that bubble. The words fit in it appropriately, so maybe you need bigger text, maybe you need a smaller bubble. Really take a critical eye to that space around the outside of your diamond shape of text. It may be inconsistent in an indie work. That I find interesting too, where sometimes the words are aligned kind of weird, or they're, they don't fit because the bubble is too too small or the bubble's huge and the text is small and it's all over the place so at least make it consistent and then i saw another one interesting another one recently that i've not seen before where the bubbles extended into the margins but when you you know when you lay out a page you have a safety box in the middle for the text so the text was crammed within this box but the bubbles were allowed to extend out of it which made the bubble like weirdly uneven and even some of the smaller bubbles the text wouldn't be centered it would be like off to one side completely unnecessary you know, at some point you have to digitize your work to put it online. So, you know, you can, there's nothing wrong with if you're a traditional artist drawing your bubbles on your paper and then adding the text, but somewhere in there you have control over the shape of your bubbles. So Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. So I promised at the beginning I would give some examples of the nitty gritty of typesetting, and I'm gonna do that, but when it came down to it, it seemed a little boring. So I made a four coma of Lottie and I going over a chapter of Scatheless. We like to go back and look at the script after it's drawn to see how the artwork has affected the story and the pacing. We add more text, remove text, etc. I wanted to look specifically of some of the text issues that I've seen out there in the wild west of indie manga, and then made a version of what, after researching this video, I think it should look like. All the text in this for coma came directly from Lottie. So this is her rant. I made a cleaner version so you can actually read it. I also ruined her English a little bit because it gets bad out there. I initially made my own quote bad version and then out of curiosity I went on to Manga Plus creators to double check and see what people are actually currently doing and oh man it was way worse. I do keep in mind that for some of the creators English is probably not their first language and some are quite young. But at the end of the day while this may be a reality it's not an excuse. If you're going to use English in your manga you need to do it the right way. But that's why we're here right? To look at what's being done and try to make it right. So one of the things I see more often than I would hope is left aligned text. In comics you always, always want to center align your text. And then usually with that, the left aligned text is in a font that's mixed case and one you might find in a document. But when small, English is easier to read when it's capitalized, so when manga is printed in a little digest book, you want it as easy to read as possible. Mixed case does happen with select artists, but it's not the most common. Next is an example of probably a carryover from translation, where the bubbles and text weren't designed to fit together. This bubble has a huge space around the text. The text in all three of these is stacked a little tight, which ends up being a lot physically to read. You really want to create a diamond shape from your text, where the the sentence in the center is the widest. This bubble has way too much space around it. You want about a letter space, a character space between the text and the bubble, so not right up against the bubble, which I've also seen. Stop doing that. Continuing to panel two. Got a couple of things going on here, and I made it a little extreme, but you know, often there are multiple things going on. Uh, a thing I've noticed in ESL creators, including Lottie, is the overuse of swear words. Like, can we cram any more cuss words into your manga? Remember in Japanese they use rude words?
words, but they don't cuss. It's not actually in the language. We do in English, and in writing it can be weird and off-putting. Unless, of course, you're making a point. Lottie is German, and oh boy, she's got a potty mouth, and it can get really distracting. So I try to restrict her and use it when it's really important. In Scathless, you'll see there's only one or two potty mouth words when it really needs to emphasize the character's emotion. If she had her way, every bubble would have fuck in it. But that aside, we've got the issue of capitalized eyes all over this place. In English comic lettering, capitalized I with the crossbars is only used for the personal pronoun I when the I is by itself. If it's in the middle of a word, you can just use a lowercase I or lowercase L if your font doesn't have just the stick. The other thing here is the leading, which is to say the space between the lines. I'm guessing this also came from translation. And yes, some fonts do that automatically. They have a wide line space that you'll want to reduce. And just like previously, these bubbles have way too much space around them. It's a little excusable here though, because development is a really long word. It's still a little bit too much. And one extra detail, if you look at the ellipses, the dots, in English grammar there's three dots. So just use three, not five, not eight, three. When I was doing the research for this video and looking deeper into American type settings, a fun thing I found is the uh, frequent use of bold and italic to emphasize something. I've not used that personally, but I think I will from now on because it was really kind of fun and I like how dynamic it was. But moving on to our third panel, we've got a few situations going on here, but the most obvious is the one that made me want to make this video in the first place. I was reading an indie manga made by a friend and came across a panel with a million words in it. It's way too much. Their bubbles weren't as much of a mess as this, but I wanted to make multiple points, so here we are. The capital I is going wrong in this bubble right away. I also noticed they use swear words, but then randomly switched to Grawlix which is using symbols instead of swear words. So that was jarring, like use one or the other, but by the time we got to the Grawlix, it's like, well, you already swore, so what's the point of changing it now? So we've got some things going on. And I've even seen where someone will do a hard enter to a comma or a period, so it's just out there by itself, orphaned. Knock it back, or maybe pull down the entire last word with the period and start the new sentence midline. Whatever you do, don't have a comma starting your line or a period, that's just weird. Don't do that. And then one of my major pet peeves is breaking up English words willy-nilly. We don't do that in English. English words aren't treated that way. In Japanese, it's fine. You can break up Japanese words however you want. It doesn't matter because of the kanji. You can still see what's going on. You can instinctively read where the word breaks are because of the kanji kana combination. But in English, we just have our stupid letters, so it doesn't work. There's no reason to do that. Knock it down to the next line. Work with your words until they fit or find a different word. If your word is 20 letters long, try to find a synonym that's shorter. You're not translating. You're not tied to this word. You're making your own script, so you have that freedom. In this middle bubble, this is what I call chimney stacking, and there's no reason to do it this much. Again, you're not translating, you're writing your own script. If there's too many words, you can reduce them down. I cut the word count right down here, so there's only 43 words in this panel. I was trying to keep it as below 60 as I could get away with. She's very wordy and at request was being extra wordy, purposely wordy, so it was a lot to break down and make it shorter while having the same impact and making her point about what her cursing would do and turn into. I threw in a couple of German words because occasionally when I talk to her online, German words will sneak in and Habe appears more often instead of have. The last bubble here is another one that I see, but this is with the reverse of the spacing. Often you see the wide spacing, but sometimes there's no spacing at all and the words will just cross over the side of the bubble. The only time I've seen it almost work is having a tall rectangle instead of a speech bubble, maybe for narration, and the text lays right across the center, creating a visual cross. If you're doing that on purpose stylistically and doing it well, it could be impactful and create an interesting visual effect, but if you're just doing it wrong, then it looks like you're doing it wrong and says nothing. Make your bubble bigger, make the word smaller. Okay, last one. We've got a couple of things going on here. Again, I wanted to emphasize the breaking up of the words, chimney stacking, and a weird one that I saw that I mentioned earlier in the video where the bubble was made way too large in what we call full bleed, where it will go off the page and be cropped, but there's actually a print safe zone for your text. So the text was shoved over to make sure it was still in the safe zone, leaving this entire massive space in an uneven bubble. It looked strange and just wrong, which was a shame because the artwork was awesome. You can move that bubble in or design the layout of your page to account for the text being held closer to the center of the page. If you're not translating, you get to choose where your bubble placement is, you get to choose your text and how it lays out with your artwork instead of just plopping it on the page. It takes some practice, but if you're thinking about it as you're doing it, over time you'll get better. The last one here has a couple of things going on that I see and I'm like, why though? This text is shoved to the bottom of its bubble. I've seen it shoved to the top, shoved to the bottom, left, all over the place. And then a random use of the manga temple font, I guess in lieu of bold and italicized. I'm not sure, but that's my guess. I don't know why this always stands out to me. Probably just a personal font preference, but I don't like it. 
Let's switch to what I would do and what I've found with this research. Because I learned a lot too. And I've really tried to work on the diamond shape of my text, brought the text closer together, and was really paying attention to the space around the outside of the text. I took out the swear words. I only used one for impact and humor. I had to take a minute to think of where I wanted it because she used it so much. I had to cut her rant right down. No more than 25 words in a bubble. I think I cut these down to like 15 or 20. The technically specific stuff in the typesetting, I would say are rules and really need to be learned before you start breaking them for storytelling and visual effect. Learn how you're supposed to do it and do it as right as you can. Then start playing with it in an informed and intentional way. But don't just do it wrong from the start and say, it's, it's my, my style, style bro. bro. Because it's obvious you're just doing it wrong. That's all there is to it. And it takes away from your story, it takes away from the visual experience and breaks the immersion, which you don't want. You're taking a long time to make this thing. Don't ruin it with your poor text. And regarding font that you'd use in a document, try not to use those if you're able to avoid it. Use something that's based on comic writing or handwritten text, not cursive. Please God, not cursive. Unless you're doing it for a joke. If you're out there reading indie manga and manga plus creators, take a moment to consider the text, how it's laid out, what fonts it in, how does it sit in the bubble? How does the text and bubble affect the page? It's good to think about these things. And through that observation, you may be able to adjust your own technique and improve it. Kerning, leading, and tracking. Leading is measured from the baseline of each line of text where the letters sit. More often than not, I've seen strange issues with leading. Inking in English aims to take up as little space as possible. We don't need to leave extra room for furigana because we don't have kanji and it's not an issue in English. In Clip Studio, it's listed as line space. Kerning also adjusts space, but of the distance between two letters. Set too closely together, words are indecipherable. Set too far apart, they're awkward to read. In CSP, it's listed as character spacing. Tracking is often confused for kerning, but the concept is a little different. Tracking involves adjusting the space throughout the entire word. And from what I can tell, in CSP it's represented by condensed text. When you squint your eyes at your text, it should look homogenous. But you don't want the letters so close that they smush and like mixed together. You, you still want it to be legible and readable, but you don't need a mile between each word line. Kerning also adjusts space, but of the distance between two letters. Set too closely together, words are indecipherable. Set too far apart, they're awkward to read. In CSP, it's listed as character spacing. Tracking is often confused for kerning, but the concept is a little different. Tracking involves adjusting the space throughout the entire word. And from what I can tell, in CSP, it's represented by condensed text. Make sure your text is readable. Easily readable. And it can be worth typing out some stuff and printing it out and seeing the difference on paper in print. And it's a good way to get a feel for the actual font size you want. I did that initially and it was interesting to see just how small kanji can get and still be legible compared to our Latin letters. So as we take the manga baton and lend our skills and history to it to the next phase of manga, lettering skills in English are certainly a component we can improve overall and naturalize as artists in this language, smoothing out that visual aesthetic and playing right by our language and, and treating it how it should be, not breaking up words and hyphenating them. That's just rude. I'm going to keep working hard at it and trying to improve my lettering. Hope you do too, and I believe in you.